Good evening and welcome to our evening service. It's good to have you with me in my office space which I've been changing slightly recently and I've been doing a bit of decorating whilst we've been in lockdown. But you're very welcome. We may not be able to meet in person with each other but that doesn't stop us meeting in person with God. So we come, not into a place dedicated to Christian teaching, not into a place dedicated to pray, praise and prayer, but into our front rooms, our kitchens, our bedrooms, our offices, even our gardens, for we can still worship together in strength, in honesty and in unison. For God is and always will be our loving, caring and blessed Lord. Which brings me to hymn 25. I want to use verses 1 and 4 as our call to worship. Now you might think, why have I left out verses 2 and 3? Well, verse 2 starts, Here are symbols to remind us, and suggests we can see the font of the pulpit and the cross in the church. Of course, we can't. You may see the angel painted behind me, which is one of Dye's paintings. But we don't have the normal symbols, so that's why I've, I've missed out verse 2. And verse 3 starts, Here our children find a welcome. And whereas I'm sure our children do find a welcome in our homes, it's not really what the, the hymn writer meant. But I think verses 1 and 4 still work together very well, even though we meet through YouTube in a virtual service. So our call to worship. Hymn 25, verse 1. God is here, as we, your people, meet to offer praise and prayer. May we find in fuller measure what it is in Christ we share. Here, as in the world around us, all our varied skills and arts wait the coming of the Spirit into open minds and hearts. Lord of all, of church and kingdom, in an age of change and doubt, keep us faithful to the gospel, help us work your purpose out. Here, in this day's dedication, all we have to give, receive. We who cannot live without you, we adore you, we believe. In our opening prayers we have a, a prayer of praise, a prayer of thanksgiving and a prayer seeking God's forgiveness. Let us pray. First a prayer of praise and worship to our Creator God. Almighty God, we come into your presence to praise and worship you. For you are the Creator and Sustainer of all, all that there is. Every time we look at your world it speaks to us of your awesome power and your creative love. How can we look at the hills and the mountains, the valleys and the rivers, the seas and the oceans, the birds and the animals, and not be moved to worship you? How can we see the colours and beauty of flowers and fruits, or look into the eyes of someone we love and not give praise to our Maker? Father, you sent us your Son, Jesus Christ, so that once we had experienced your love to us in him, we would see your creation through the eyes of faith and give you the glory you deserve. We praise you, the God of creation. We worship you, the Lord of salvation. We thank you the giver of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Christ. Amen. And a prayer of thanks to our bountiful God. Bountiful God, we come together to offer up our thanks for all that you provide for us. For early morning bird song, late afternoon sunsets, and all the beauty of nature for the love of friends and family, 
that gives us such joy. For basic vegetables, exotic fruits, special treats and the food that nourishes us. For the freedoms we enjoy and the things that make us happy. But we especially thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who shows us how to live through his own life and teaching and who offers us a new beginning and gives us real and meaningful hope through his death and resurrection. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit who is beside us throughout our lives. Bountiful God, we come together to offer up our thanks for all that you provide for us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And a prayer of confession to our merciful God. Merciful God, we come together aware that we are not worthy to be in your presence. We confess that we have so often not acknowledged you as our Creator God. Forgive us. We confess that we have so often taken for granted the bounties of your creation. Forgive us. We confess that we have so often been selfish and not cared for those around us. Forgive us. And we confess that our lives have so often not been what you want them to be. Merciful God, forgive us as you have in the past and enable us to be the people you want us to be. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and our Friend. Amen. Our Gospel reading is taken from Matthew chapter 13 verses 1 to 9 and 18 to 23. And this is one of the lectionary readings for today. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil, and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let any one with ears listen. And from verse 18. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is our Holy Scripture. Thanks be to God. Some thoughts on that passage from Matthew's Gospel. Do you remember the days when you might get an invitation to go round to a friend or relative's house to see their holiday snaps? You might expect to have a look through a few prints and, and then perhaps enjoy some food and drink. 
but your heart would sink when you saw the slide projector with boxes and boxes containing hundreds of slides that you'd have to sit through. At least if they switched the lights off, you could have a snooze. Well, I thought I would start with some of my holiday snaps. What was that? Did I hear cries of, oh no, not his holiday snaps? Well, regardless of that, here they are. These four photos are of my brother and myself in Devon. OK, a few years ago. All right, many, many years ago. I hope I'm hearing a few ahs and comments like, aren't they sweet, rather than, what a shame they had to grow up. But the point of showing these is for you to see the amount of space that was around us on the beach. There always seemed to be loads of space for us to play in, build sandcastles and for mum and dad to sit in their deck chairs enjoying the warmth of the sun. Somewhat different to the scenes we saw on Bournemouth Beach a couple of weeks ago when people crowded together with very little distance between the families. I wouldn't like that even before the pandemic and the need for social distancing. I'd like it even less now. But it must have been a bit like that when Jesus went and sat by the lake. Matthew tells us that such great crowds gathered round him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. The crowds flocked to Bournemouth Beach for a reason. They were desperate to get out into the sunshine and enjoy the seaside. So what was the reason the crowds come in to see and listen to this charismatic preacher? Well, lots of people came to Jesus, but so many came for what they could get from him. Perhaps for healing, or because they thought he might overthrow the Roman rulers, or perhaps because they thought he might make life easier under the strict Jewish laws. But not many came to learn how to live better lives or for spiritual guidance. They came for what they could get and not necessarily for what they could learn. And so Jesus tells them the parable about the sower. Now I'd imagine that many went away thinking, what was that all about? Why did he have to tell us that? We know that when a sower sowed seeds, not all of them come up. Was it necessary for him to say that to us? But the strange thing is, Jesus doesn't give his interpretation to the crowd, but later, privately, to the disciples. Why was that? Well, I think part of the reason is that in chapter 13, we see a, a noticeable change in Jesus' ministry. Before this point, we often hear of him speaking in the synagogue, but now we see him teaching and preaching outdoors. It isn't that the doors of the synagogue have completely closed to him, but he's finding more hostility. More hostility from the, the leaders of the day, the scribes, the Pharisees. And perhaps there's a little bit of that rubbing off on ordinary people. So he tells the parable to the people and leaves them to work out exactly what it means. But he explains it to the disciples, perhaps to encourage them. I mean, there's nothing worse than continuing to try and spread the good news and seeing no, no results whatsoever. It can be very disheartening. Perhaps some of the disciples needed a lift, a little bit of encouragement. To them, Jesus needed to be listened to. But it must have seen at times that things were not going as they'd hoped or expected. People weren't always listening, or if they were, they certainly weren't responding. The doors of the synagogue were shutting, forcing them out into the countryside, as I've said. And it's only there that they could then continue their work. And there, then there was that hostility against Jesus from the religious leaders of the day. If they were downhearted, it's no wonder, and they would have needed a lift. We all need a lift and a little bit of encouragement from time to time. If you've never checked out the story of Barnabas in the Bible, it's worth doing so. Even his name means the son of encouragement. When Paul came to Jerusalem after his conversion, not many of the Christians there were, were liking him. Many of them saw him as a persecutor and an enemy of the church. But Barnabas was give, willing to give him a second chance and encouraged other Christians to do the same. And then when John Mark 
turned back from accompanying Paul on one of his journeys, it was Barnabas again who encouraged him and ended up healing the break with Paul. A bit of encouragement goes a long, long way. Just think how many of our wonderful NHS frontline staff have been encouraged by the simple act of members of the public standing on the, foot, on the roadsides, clapping them for five minutes each week. We've heard many of them say on the television how much they have appreciated that and how much it's given them a lift. Even the greatest men and women need encouragement and the disciples were no different. And I think that's perhaps why Jesus explains this parable so well to them. They needed to understand that not all the seed that they were sowing will grow to produce a crop, but they need to keep sowing. Sometimes it might feel like the current situation, when we've tried so hard to spread the gospel through activities like Church Without Walls, and events that might encourage people who don't normally come into our churches to become more interested, has hit a brick wall with Covid and the necessity for us to close our church doors. But that does not mean we should stop sowing the seeds. When you think about it, when the doors of the synagogues were starting to close against Jesus, he found other ways of showing his love and the forgiveness of God. And we need to take encouragement from that. We need to keep sowing the seeds. Jesus' parable shows that there were three times as many places that seed could fall and produce nothing against the good ground where it might produce a harvest. But unless we keep sowing, there will be no harvest. And even as we sow the seeds of God's love, we have to accept that we won't necessarily see the results. For we never know when those seeds will create a crop. A story I've told before, and you may have heard, is about a Methodist from Yorkshire, a man called Herbert G. And he tells the lovely story of a lonely old man called Thomas, who used to attend his church. One day Thomas died, and thinking there would be no one there at the funeral, Herbert G. decided to attend himself. And sure enough, he was the only one in the church, apart from the minister. It was a wild and a windy day. And as they reached the cemetery gate, Herbert noticed a soldier standing to one side. He was wearing a raincoat, and it was obvious that he was an officer, but there was no badge on his overcoat to show his rank. As the coffin reached the graveside, the soldier stepped forward for the ceremony, and when it was over, he swept up his hand to his forehead in a salute worthy of a king. Herbert G. walked away from that graveside with the soldier. And as he did so, the wind blew open the soldier's raincoat, and it revealed that he was a brigadier. The soldier explained to G. that when he was a child, old Thomas was his Sunday school teacher. And the soldier said, I was a wild lad and a sore trial to him. He never knew what he did for me, but I owe everything I am or will be to Thomas today. So I've come to salute him at the end. Thomas didn't know that the sowed he had seen in that young boy would one day bear rich fruit. And we don't know the results of all the seed that we sow. It's merely our job to sow the seed and allow God to do the rest. And isn't that appropriate as we continue to push forward the idea of church without walls and as we use this period of lockdown to try out and possibly create new ways of worship and new forms of church? I think it is. We have to keep trying. We have to keep sowing the seed. Because if we don't sow the seed, then there will be no growth whatsoever. May God bless us as we move forward into this new phase of church development and outreach. And may God bless and water the seed that we sow. Amen. Let us
Now we come to our prayers for other people and I have called this a world of need due to Covid and the first part of our prayers for other people concentrates on the situation we're in. Let us pray. Father we pray for your world and all your children in it. As Christ stood alongside those who are suffering and reach out to those seeking healing and understanding. Help us to stand with all those who are facing issues and uncertain futures, especially because of COVID-19. So Lord, we pray especially for those who are ill with the disease, those at home unable to work, those who are in hospital, and especially we also pray for those who wait by their bedsides or by the telephone, waiting and hoping to hear news of recovery. 
We pray for those who have been left traumatised or bereaved because of the pandemic. And for those whose jobs have either gone or are in jeopardy due to the situation. We also pray for those who have been affected mentally by what they have seen or heard or just from the extra stresses of life under lockdown. And we pray for those whose illnesses are not related to Covid but are struggling due to their operations, their treatments and their therapies being delayed or cancelled because of the pandemic. Give them strength, peace and patience and the knowledge that you are standing there beside them and give us the ability and willingness to stand with, with them and support them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for doctors, nurses and all other staff in hospitals, care homes, hospices and other places where there are health issues and for all who work for the welfare of others. We pray for health and social workers, for those who provide food banks, for those who dedicate their lives to others and for those who continue to work to maintain law and order and a structure to our lives. Give us the strength and the desire to stand with them and support them in their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for people and nations whose intentions for good are undermined by the emptiness and foolishness of those about them. For those whose lives are being spoilt by the selfishness and self-centeredness of others. For those whose hopes and joys are being eroded by the lack of responsibility of others. Give us love and compassion to stand with those who stand alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are abused or exploited and for those who are treated differently because of their colour, their nationality, their gender, their ability or even their disability. We pray for those who are confused by this fast changing world and for those who feel isolated, alone and vulnerable. And we pray for those who have confused self-centred ambition and greed with personal freedom and personal choice. Give us the determination to share the love of Christ, which knows no boundaries and accepts no barriers or limitations and brings hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves. Teach us new words to say, new things to do and new lives to lead, that we, by the power of your Holy Spirit, might be, might be more open to your life-changing and world-transforming love and grace. Teach us to be considerate and supportive of others, so that they might feel not only our love, but your love through us. Help us to measure ourselves with Jesus, the King of Kings, yet the servant of servants. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers in the name of Christ, the one who walked where we walk and shared all that life means to us. Amen. And let's say the Lord's Prayer together, and I'm suggesting we use the traditional version. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining me tonight. It's been a pleasure and a privilege to serve you in this act of worship. Shall we now say the grace together? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all and those that we love, now and forever. Amen.